from being a premium product once the intel pentium processor has now devolved to an entry level cpu in today's standards in this video i will review and compare the intel pentium dual core g4400 to the 5 year old amd fx6300 and find how a modern least expensive intel's dual core offering can compete with amd's mainstream processor that has advantage of 6 cores and higher cache memory both models are aimed at budget users who want to spend as little money as possible while still getting the best performance pentium g4400 is a dual core model the cheapest available skylake processor and can handle two threads at 3.3 gigahertz clock speed with 3 mp cache memory and a ttp of 54 watts supports ram size up to 64 gb with 2133 megahertz as a maximum clock speed pentium and some i3 i5 models that ends with suffix p will have the weaker intel hd 510 graphics instead of hd 530 Anyway the inbuilt GPU is very capable of playing 4K videos without any stuttering. Pentium doesn't feature any clock speed or core enhancing technologies like hyper threading or turbo boost. AMD FX6300 is an unlocked CPU that has 6 cores running at 3.5 GHz as base clock speed and turbo boost to run at 4.1 GHz under heavy load. A huge 14 MB as total cache memory. It is based on very old 32 nanometer fabrication process compared to highly efficient Pentium's 14 nanometer technology. You can take a quick look at the test system components used for the benchmark in the description section below. With CPU-Z inbuilt benchmark test, the Pentium produced higher score in single thread performance, but AMD bettered in multi-core test with the help of six cores. The benchmark is carried out again with FX6300 truncated to two cores to simulate as a dual core CPU. This reveals the average per core performance of FX series both in single and multi core test. W prime tool runs complex calculation utilizing all the cores and finally shows the time taken for completing it. FX wins here with a big difference with the advantage of more cores and clock speed. With Geekbench 3 test, again FX poor single core performance is much apparent here. Well, the Pentium closely matched FX in multi-thread speed. Cinebench rendering will perform best when more number of cores are present in a processor. Once again, the FX 6300. was much faster than the pentium when all the cores are used but again it loses in single core performance against the g4400 now i am going to compress a game folder that is sized about 34 gb and record the time taken by these cpus well the fx is much ahead of pentium dual core cpu in both compression and decompression test Next, running the benchmark that is integrated in the SoundZip software. FX rules here in each of these tests done by the software. With Handbrake software, I am converting a 1.4 GB AVI into a MKB file using H.264 codec. The impact of multi-core deficiency in Pentium G4400. is very well expressed in this chart the fx is 40% faster over the dual core now let's find which processor is going to extract better frame rates in the following gaming tests the fx achieved higher average and maximum fps but the pentium had maintained good minimum frame rates
Our primary target is Tower 3 Delta 3. As soon as you get the hardware, we'll knock the bastard out cold. Sector 1 Delta 3. Looks good. There. Sector 1 Delta 0. Sector 1 Delta 2. Got something. Side of the tower. I thought that would be fucking obvious. some dynamic foliage and explosion AV scenes with the Pentium CPU. going? Help me! Help! Yeah. Come 
Are you mad? Even my phone has 4 cores. Why the hell you want a dual core CPU for a computer? This is going to be the answer from most people when you talk about buying a Pentium CPU. But the G4400 is an impressive budget processor and it rules in single thread performance which most applications and even some games depend on that. It is very similar in performance compared to second generation Sandy Bridge i3 CPUs. I have two major reasons in favor of G4400. Number one is, on Intel side, the upgrade path is much better with the Pentium CPU. You can grab the G4400 right now. That future proofs your PC for later upgrades and once you save the money over time, upgrade it to a better i3 or i5 model. Until then, your rig will remain as a good budget system. And number two is, it allows you to save money and put it towards a better GPU or higher capacity SSD or even a Z170 motherboard and later upgrade to better CPU once you are ready to afford. The Skylake Pentium is a quite capable affordable gaming chip and you can play most games at least in medium settings without a huge drop in average frame rates by pairing it with a decent discrete GPU. But the minimum frame rate will be pretty much affected in some demanding titles like GTA 5 that benefits hugely when more than two cores used. And some new games like Far Cry 4 requires at least quad core or four threads to run. If your preferred games are on that list, then you need to look out for an i3 or higher models. I don't see any big issues recommending the Pentium G4400 for an average home user or even gamers who are on strict budget. I noticed a big difference in performance between the two processors when it comes to encoding jobs. But an average user will not most likely perform these tasks on a regular basis. While FX comes as a better choice for encoding jobs, I don't suggest you to buy any AMD FX series which severely lacks an upgrade path. In addition, it consumes more power and dissipates high amount of heat with the use of aged 32 nanometer technology. The G4400 certainly not meant for any demanding workloads and if you need a better CPU for such needs then the i3-6100 remain as a prominent suggestion from me. If you are building that first budget PC for games or any regular tasks and able to extend the budget a little, I request you to consider a minimum of i3 CPU that provides tremendous price to performance ratio and remains as a well balanced system to handle any kind of tasks without any significant performance compromises. Thanks for watching this video and hit the thumbs up button below if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe which is going to energize me to create more videos.